Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 17, building an app, Canvas Painter. Relative indexes. When looping over an array, we use a counter variable, typically i, to keep track of which index we're at. We can then access this content at each index with the syntax list bracket i. We've done that a bunch of times. If we want, however, we could access the contents of the next element as well since the index is just one greater. For example, if we are currently focused on the element at index i, then list index plus one gives us access to the next element in the array. In other words, you can reference indexes relative to your counter variable. Hmm. Over here, we have a little example, and this is just saying, hey, index plus one just goes to the next spot. We are going to use relative indexing to create our final effect, which will look sort of like an etching of the image. The idea is simple. For every X and Y location in the event list, draw a straight line between that location and the location stored 10 points further down the array. Hmm. You will use the line command to draw a line connecting these points. We have our do this. Read the documentation for line. Set the style of the final button in design mode. Give a label like etch. Also give it a descriptive ID and attach a click event handler to it. We are going to call clear canvas to clear the screen. We're going to create a for loop that counts from zero to event list minus 10. Hmm. Why do you think we're not counting over the entire array? Hmm, I think that because we are going 10 above to connect the line, if we go to our final position, we can't go 10 further and it's gonna be out of bounds. So in order to keep in bounds, we're just going to go the entire list of the array minus the last 10 positions. But that's just my guess. I think we'll find out why. Use line to draw a line between the X and Y locations of event list I and event list i plus 10. The full line of code will be another big one. Looks like they're giving it to us too, kids. Looks like we have the original numbers here and then our new numbers plus 10. Looks like we have one each for the x and the y. I think we should read about our line to understand better what these two different numbers are. Use set stroke color and or set stroke width inside the event handler to make the lines visible. Otherwise, they will be transparent since we set the stroke color to transparent at the beginning of the program. Well, that makes sense. We want this to be dark, not transparent like it is now, so we have to set this within this function. Otherwise, it'll go to what the default or global one is. Run your app and confirm that your new button creates a sketch effect as shown below. We have the word hey here. They're drawing it out with their little bubbles. Then it looks like we're going to hit the etch button here. We got random, our spray paint, original, and then etch. Etch looks like it gives a little line. Well, this doesn't sound too bad at all. We've been working through this, and really this sounds a lot like the other ones. This time, instead of using circle though, it looks like we're using line. Let's learn a little more about line first. Under canvas, we have line here. Let's see the documentation. Draws a line on the active canvas from X1, Y1 to X2, Y2. Well, this sounds a lot like math class when we have the coordinate system. We go from one point to another point, and what we do is we name point A and point B to connect those lines. Well, I'm glad I learned that in math class. Looks like we can draw a bunch of things on Canvas, and all we really need to do is specify our start and our end points. That looks like what that original number is gonna be, and then the plus 10 will be our next point. We have some examples here of how you can use it and the syntax. 
I highly suggest spending a little more time reading it than I'm going to go over, but I think I have enough understanding to continue with this lesson. Let's go into design mode. What we need to do is this third button here. I'm just going to reuse their names. This is going to be etch button. The text is just going to say etch. Let's change the color. We already have a green. Let's change it to a nice purple little school colors here. That looks like a good color to me. Now that we changed our button, we now have to create a event handler for it. I'm going to go down to my bottom of my code here. I'm going to drag an event in. This event is going to be my etch button. So I'm going to change the ID to etch button. What needs to go inside here? I know I need to clear my canvas like before. So I'm going to drag my clear canvas in. And now I need to create some sort of for loop. Hmm. How's that going to look? Well, let's go over to our control. Let's find our for loop, drag that in. We want this to go the entire length of the list minus 10. How are we gonna write that out? Well, we wanna just do the event list dot length minus 10 exactly like it is up here. So we're just adding our for loop that is going to count down the entire array minus 10 spots. Why 10? Well, we're adding 10 to our line and we're always looking out 10 above it. So I'm going to assume when we get to the end, we don't want to look for 10 above it. That'll make us go out of bounds. We want to put our counter up after that. Would we want to run for this array? Well, we want this line command here. We're going to have to input it just like it is here. So I'm going to go back to my canvas down at the bottom or the top. We're going to drag a line command in. We're going to type it in just like this. We want to pull the original number off of our event list array. And then we want to call it again. But this time we just want to add 10 to each of those numbers. And it should draw a line between the original and the line 10 ahead of it in the array. Let's see if that's what happens. We have our event list bracket i, and this is a dot offset in the x direction. I'm going to copy this here so I don't mess up. And now for my y, I can paste that in except it's not going to be X, it's going to be Y now. This should go to my array index and figure out wherever the user inputted a circle at. The next two is where we want the line connected to. Make sure this is a capital Y as well. I'm going to, again, paste my offset X in here, but in my I, now I'm just going to do plus 10. So whatever index I'm at, that number, I want to add 10 to it. One last time, this is our offset in the Y direction. We want the index, but we want the index and add 10 to that number. Parentheses, semicolon, that looks pretty good. We are not done yet. We still have to use a set stroke color and or a set stroke width inside this event handler. We want to make sure it's not transparent. Where do I want to add that? Hmm. I think I want to set my stroke color before my loop. So let's go down here and let's just start typing set stroke color. And what color do I want? I just want black. So let's just type in black. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. We don't want this to mess with the other drawing effects though. So at the end of this, let's just make sure we set it back to set stroke color again, and let's set this back to our original RGBA values. Those values were 
just zero, zero, zero for our red, green, blue. What was our alpha or opacity? It was also zero. Make sure you are remembering your quotes. That should be RGB surrounded there. At the end, another parenthesis and a semicolon. Should look just like that. This line here is just ensuring that we go back to our original each time. I think this code should give us an etching effect like their example up here. Let's test it out. Hit run. Let's type in my letter of my last name, R. Do a big R here. We can do random, make it random size circles. Go back to our original, looks original. We can do a spray paint to make it give it a spray painted look. Go back to our original. This should give it a line effect when I hit etch. I definitely get a line effect there. Though this looks more like an art project where you get the strings and you tie it around the nail and you make the little array. Very fun project too. Let's start over. Let's try something else. Let's try our grade in this class for an A. Random, original, etch it. And this points here, the 10 points ahead of it are just up here and that's why it's connecting it. Let's just do one more. Let's just do a line like this. And let's see what the etch looks like now. Definitely a little different, more like their example up here. Pretty neat, pretty fun kids. I think our code is working the way it should. Looking back up here to our do this, we read the documentation for line. We set the style of the final button to design mode to etch. We gave it a meaningful and descriptive ID. We created a new event handler. We cleared the canvas. We created a for loop inside that counts from zero for the entire length of the list, minus 10. Why minus 10? Well, we use the line command. And what that does is draw from point one to point two. Point two, we had at the original plus 10. We didn't want to go out of bounds of our array, so we just stopped counting 10 beforehand. We also use the set stroke color inside the event handler to make the lines more visible. And they definitely were. We ran the app multiple times and it created the effect shown below. Very fun lesson overall. I think that's all code.org wants from us. Let's see if they were anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I will see you all on the final lesson.